Hey what's up guys, it's Jirasa here, and today I want to make a quick introduction to Amira Aviza. Uh, it's a Thermo Fisher program for segmenting, labeling, and animating CT scan models. Yeah, I just wanted to give you guys kind of just a walkthrough of how I segment a model, uh, skeleton. So here's one that I just finished. This is a northern sea lion from the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology Collections. It's actually a northern or a stellar sea lion embryo. Uh, you can see it's missing a lot of bits. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this from scratch. So the first thing you have to do when segmenting a CT scan is actually open the data. So here's the output of a CT scan. This is basically what you get, at least for the machine that I use, which is a mini CT scanner. Um, you want to make sure that you use the reconstructed version of the CT scan, or else you'll have like a very, you can't do anything with the non-reconstructed CT scan. You want to go ahead and select the first like black picture and then all the way down to the very bottom hold shift and then click on this one and that'll select all of them and then you just open it and it'll convert this to a 3d model that you can then segment it's up to you guys and how much uh, memory you have memory is ram uh, but i personally read complete volume into memory because i find that it runs faster for me so everything's loaded in now so you want to click on this this is the data that you're working with and you want to go into segmentation and what this does is create a new label field so you're here now um, but you can't really see anything this view is this is these are the different axes that you have access to so XY YZ and XZ Let me zoom out a little bit and yeah this is a 3d scan except it's not really in an understandable format so what I like to do right away, well, first of all, let's turn on the picture itself. Um, go into display control. It's right here on the left. I pointed, but you see where it is. Um, and then volume rendering. And depending on what you're looking at, you want to set these ranges, the range right here. And I would play around with it a bit. I'm only looking at um, ossified like bone. Basically, I'm only looking for bone. So I usually put this at around 16 to like 22,000. Um, and there you go. That filters out everything that's not a bone or like as hard as bone, basically. You can see that you play with the right slider and it makes things more or less visible because these are different. Um, this basically just adjusts the gradient. And you could use different gradients here, but I recommend generally sticking with the default grayscale.am um, because that's what works for me. And the other ones can get kind of weird and complicated. And this is also a good time to demonstrate um, what you're actually looking at here. So the top left one here is the uh, red plane. And you're just looking at like a cross section, basically. So if you slice this, let me actually go up to the skull. Um, if you sliced it like perfectly along this red plane, then you'd get this image. And the same goes for the blue plane and the green plane. So the first thing I would do is add in all of the segments that you want at once. So you're going to go into materials and add in everything that you want to separate out. So you can see on the left here that I have a list of everything that I want, basically. And this that's what I'm going to be segmenting, which is just like separating and labeling. Let me quickly explain what this is. So exterior is basically everything. It's everything that hasn't been assigned yet. Inside is just a default one. It's empty at first and you could add stuff into it. Um, I usually like to rename this one skeleton for what I do because I just put everything that's like a bone into there. So add allows you to add layers. Delete will take everything out of that material and put it back into exterior. And then locate will just show you where that material is. Although it's pretty laggy, so I don't know if I would do that. Okay, there you go. So it just brings the camera to where you can find it. And up here, um, I'll go into this more in the future, but 3D, checking that enables you to see it in 3D. And then 2D will show the labels, or the, the border around each material in 2D. Lock, this is a very important tool that I'll explain more later, but it stops the material from being changed at all. So if you lock a material, nothing can be taken or added from it. And finally, select just selects everything in the material so you can add it to another layer or something else. So another thing I would do here is mess with the contrast in 2D. That way you can either show 
less stuff or boost the contract. So the first tool I like to use is threshold. And this enables you to select material or select anything that's at like a certain density. So right now I'm selecting material between zero and 65,535. So that'll select everything. But let's say I only want to select material that's a certain density or, or hardness, I guess. So you can see that as I up the lower bound, less and less stuff will be detected, will be selected. So I want to do this so it only selects the bone. I don't want any of this noise. So I'm going to bring this up to around, that looks good, maybe a little bit more. This looks like a good threshold. You can see that I'm capturing bone, um, but not necessarily capturing a lot of the stuff that's around it. Yeah. So if, I, if you click preview 3D down here, it'll show what you're selecting exactly. So this is obviously too generous as you can see like the body of the animal and not just the skeleton. And right now we're only trying to get the skeleton. So this looks like a decent threshold, but there's still a lot of noise as you can see. So where I had it before was about right, I think 22,000 seems to be a good cutoff, um, especially for marine mammals because those tend to have denser uh, skeletons. Make sure after you select a range that you like and you think captures what you want, you click select masked voxels. By the way, voxels basically just like a 3D pixel. And you can see here what I've selected. The cup is in it, but there's not really anything I could do to avoid that at the moment. So uh, now that we've selected it, we're going to click on the skeleton material right here. And we're going to add everything that has been selected. The way we do that is pressing add. And this takes the material that's been selected, um, which was an exterior previously, and it puts it into the skeleton layer. You can see here that all of the bones have been moved to the skeleton material. And some other stuff, which we'll focus on getting rid of later. So this brings us to our next most important tool, which is the mouse tool, the pick and move tool, apparently. Um, but what this allows you to do is click on objects, and it'll select them in 3D assuming that they have their own, uh, assuming they're not touching anything else, it should just select that object. Volume rendering essentially makes, shows the 3D model based on the density of the object, and like how it shows up in the picture. So like less dense stuff will be more see-through and clear, I believe. Um, while not checking it, will just show like the actual like 3D, the actual voxels or 3D pixels. So this you might want to use sometimes, but using volume rendering gets makes the clear stuff clear so we can actually see through it. So I like to keep volume rendering on when I am selecting stuff because um, it highlights very nicely and you can kind of see it in a better context, I feel. So I just selected this bone at random and this looks to be the sternum. It's the bone in front of your organs that the ribs connect to. So I'm gonna select uh, the full row of these, you can see that this is the green plane, so I'm looking at it, splitting it down the middle like this, hence why I'm getting all the sternum in one line, which is really nice. When you're selecting stuff with the mouse tool, if you just click on it, it'll deselect everything else. If you hold down shift and click, it'll select it in addition to your last selection. If you hold down control and click something, it'll deselect it, so it'll take it out of your selection. So I like to select um, everything that's in the same material at once. And in order to move my mouse around, I have to press the scroll wheel button. So don't click out here or else it'll select everything in the entire CT scan. It'll take like minutes sometimes. And then it's not good for anything since it crashes the program. Make sure when you're touching here, outside of the, outside of the, like, the borders, you want to press the middle wheel and use that to move around. So here, in order to select this material, in addition to the material I've already selected, I press shift and click. So now that I've selected everything in the sternum that I want to select, I'm going to, oh, and by the, <laughs> now that I've selected everything in the sternum that I've wanted to, I'm going to go to the sternum material. Let's see where that is. Okay, it's like at the bottom. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna press add. Make sure you do not press the add up here or else it'll add a new material and it'll just make things messy. 
you want to click the add down here, the plus sign. So you can see now that if we turn this on and off, it'll take a moment, but yeah, you can see that if we select this on and off that we isolated the, um, the sternum material. And this now has its own unique color. If we turn off volume rendering and look at it with its own colors, you can see that it has its own color. So basically I just do this over and over and over again for each vertebrae, each rib, um, each finger and like humerus, femur, all the bones. And I give everything its own unique color. Another really important thing I want to discuss is how you're actually able to navigate around this uh, bottom right screen. And by the way, you could switch between looking at a single screen, two screens, or two horizontal screens, or four by using the buttons up here. Um, and this is to click on things, which you can't really do much with, honestly. I just remember, don't click on this area. You have to press the middle, the middle uh, real scroll thing on your mouse and and then move with that. This is to move stuff, but I don't even use that tool. And yeah, you can, if you have the uh, trackball tool selected and you like normal click on the 3D model, then it'll rotate around a central point, whichever that happens to be. And you can kind of go everywhere. It's crazy. You can like go inside the skull and stuff. If you press the middle wheel, wheel scroll bar and move, then you will um, just do like slide up and down and back, slide up and down and uh, side to side. And then if you press, if you just scroll with the wheel, not pressing it down, just scrolling up and down, sorry, just scrolling with the wheel, then you go in and out. So now in order to move up, I'm gonna press down the scroll wheel, you hear that click and then bring it up. And then I'm going to just normal click and drag to rotate and then I'm going to push down on the scroll wheel to move up and down and then scroll out to kind of get a better view. So this is actually the inside of the skull. You can see the frontal here. Uh, eyeballs would be about there. I can't really turn around. It's kind of tight, but you can see. So that's how you navigate that. I've only selected one material, right? But let's say I'm feeling very confident in this and I want to render it out. Let's say I just want to render out this sternum. So what I do in order to do that is I'd click on my labels uh, project and okay, wait, I should put this back. Very important thing to remember to be doing all the time in Amira, especially because it's such an intense program is saving. So click file and then save data. And since this is my first time saving, I have to save it. Um, I'm just going to name this 56920, which is a specimen name. Then also make sure to save the project, which is what contains the table and, and such. Um, sorry, make sure to save the project, which is what contains like the organization of the labels and stuff. So again, I'm just gonna name this 5620. And that'll be my project. That way I can open it up in the future. If you wanna make a uh, 3D model out of what you have, you wanna click on your labels and then click volume rendering and this will, might take a minute, but it'll make a 3D model of what you have so far. And once again, here in this view, it's the same controls, which is uh, click normal to rotate around, kind of. Uh, press down to go left and left and right and up and down. And then use the scroll wheel to go in and out. So you can see here, this is what uh, we segmented together and for some reason the sternum is actually not its own color even though it should be me so if you click on this tool right here off by the way I'm finding out stuff every day it'll go to the bone you want to see and zoom in and just give you like a really up close view of it which is it's convenient for the volume rendering you can mess around with the settings so there's volume rendering and then there's volume rendering settings so I would go up here and you just can look through the different settings. There's different rendering styles. I think I usually do physical, but there's different options. You could also do standard, and that just kind of changes, um, I guess, how reflective the material is. It's not a huge deal. So this was a pretty basic introduction to Amira. I didn't go over the lasso tool, which I'll probably cover in the next video. 
Um, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something about at least setting up a mirror, which can be the most annoying part. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment, and I will probably reply to all of them, because I don't know how many comments this video will get. Uh, very niche program, but I'd love to help you guys out, and I'm going to keep working on the mirror, getting better, working on these cool CT scans, and I hope you guys learned something. By the way, as you segment them, they would become different colors. I'm not so sure why the serum didn't change color, but who knows? We'll see. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, any feedback. There's certainly a few things I think I can improve in the next video. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.